Okay. Hello, everyone. So, is there anyone from you guys who tried to see the stream link source code? Just a letter. So if there's anyone who can who try to see the code. Okay. Um, I'm going to take that as a no. So, I'm going to share my card. Oh, this is a, a document, everyone. Uh, this document has been shared with all of you, so just click this part of the stream link source code. So since I already cloned it, I'm not going to clone it, but for you uh, to see the, the code base, either just clone it or you can see it from the git, your choice. But since I already cloned it, I'm going to show you from my base code. Just click here on the stream with me. Justin, it will give you the clone. Just clone it and do it. This is easy, so I'm just not going to waste time here. Uh, so let me just show you my basic code. So the purpose of this uh, stream code is not for you to understand how the stream code base works. It's just for you to understand what can be done from their uh, code, coding structure, the functions, the advantage Python functions they use in their code for their disadvantage. So the main focus when I present you this uh, tutorial should be what can you take from their way of doing to your advantage in your future projects. So just take, try to take the main things from their code base. This is their Streamlix basically uh, folder, the one that I found under the lips folder. You can find this Streamlix uh, folder in the GitHub. Uh, anyone can stop me anytime since I'm sharing. I'm not going to be able to see your text, okay? So you can see this part of the code. There's a lot of uh, Python modules here. There's a lot of folders. So how you how I want you to see this uh, to investigate the source code is just click any module. Let's start from this one. So this is the code they use for the execution execution for the internal code base. But uh, like I told you, the main point is not understanding what this do for them for their stream code base for their dashboard and everything. From this, the first thing you have to see is start from the modules. What kind of modules have they used here? Is there a new module here that you have, you guys haven't used before? So have you used this typing module in your projects before? If you haven't, try to understand that part, what it can do for you. So you can use it in your uh, on your term. Uh, this, if you see here, you can see this period, period or dots for calling a function or anything. They use this dots. What this do this dots mean? How they are calling other functions from the other fun the other modules in this folder. So just try to understand how they do things. That's the main thing you have to understand. We are seeing their code base because it is created with more efficient way. It's their the performance of their code is very perfect. Everything they use is uh, follow the best practices. So we are trying to capture the best practices from their code base and understand that and just uh, try to uh, try to in, use it in our project. That's the main purpose. So start from the, their import, how they import their data from other modules. Um, you can see here, the, from this module, you can see there is the Streamlist folder. Under the Streamlist folder, it can tell you there's a runtime folder. And under the runtime folder, you see this can be a, fo a folder or a script or a folder or a module. And from that module, they grab these functional functions. So either you can just follow this path to find this particular function and to see what this function can do by by going through the steps, a string bit and one time, then the script runner folder, and you can find the git script once it takes. So it means this function is found under one of these 
modules. So you can click one the modules and see to find the function and try to see what the function does. And if there's any new thing in the the way the function is created that you haven't seen before, and try to understand that. So if you are uh, exploring these things in your basic code, you don't have to just go through every folder to find the file. Just when you see new things that you want to learn, just click here and go to definition, and it will bring you the folder in short time. This is a short token you can use, so it's found under the streamline context, this one, and you can see the function here. Function here, and see the fun if the function, the way it's written, if it's something you already know, just pass it and just look for another thing that you could find in this module that is new for you that you can take on. So, for example, here, here, what does this mean? After the, the function, when you put an arrow and put this like this, what does this mean? Do you know what it means? If you don't know it, search it. Go to your Google search and try to search what does this mean when we put an arrow after a, a function in Python. Just search anything you want and try to understand that and try to see if you can use it in your project the way they structure their code. That is the main thing you have to look for. So try this is this indicates you there's the the return function for this function would be an optional array, something like that. So uh, and every function in the streamlit code base has a, co a comment here, a much long comment. So it will tell you uh, what the function can do in short. So read this. This is the first thing you have to do. Uh, read the comment here and try it will give you a hint of what this function is doing so try to see anything new you can see here there's a logger which means logging is a python module so you can install it and use it but you, you use it that's the thing they did also but the way they use logger they have given it a structure here how they use it in the stream code can help you to use it in the stream code after installation, they list it by going to the definition, how they formulate their logger. Yeah. They call uh, here also this one. What does this final mean for the variable? This is a typing. Python has typing inside its module. Research that. What is typing? Search it here. The, what is typing? I think the Python module. I think it, typing it, it gives you typing keys for Python. It gives you what typing means in Python so you can understand it. So after you understand what it means, go back to your code and discover what this typing is, is means for this logger variable. It's indicating that this logger variable is a constant. Final final typing hint in Python is a constant variable. So it's showing you logger is a constant variable. It cannot be changed. Uh, and it's calling this different logger function from somewhere, right? And where it's calling, you can find it either from here or you can just go by clicking, go to definition. It will show you where the logger function is found. And here you can see in, in the entire log, logger.py module, you can see how they structure their login for their code base. They structured it very well, very well. So you can see if the label is critical, they have given the label should be like this, or if the label is critical or login dot critical, this is the output. They provided everything here for their for their code base. So when you use the logger module, you can easily by just click when if there's a enough condition, if something is satisfied, logger dot info should be like this. You can do that. That's the simplest way, but in the screen code base, they have put it after their, their, their logger for the entire code base, and they every login in their entire code base is run or called through this, through this way of function here. So in this function, if there's anything new that is that you don't understand, try to search it and understand it and try to capture or to uh, take notes and to just learn it, uh, test it with different functionalities. 
and see if you can use it in your own project. Project. So their login is structured really well. So every time there is in in a, entire their module, if they want to call their uh, login, they call this this functions from their logar the py function module and according to that they will get a login function so i hope you know login the purpose of this login is like a print it just display an output based on the condition you give it it can either give you a warning or a success uh, output or it can give you a critical uh, output it just it, it displays it expect it displayed it in a more broad and uh, in a broad or it contains more, you can just broad a lot of or contain a lot of outputs in logar in login in print I, I it will say just print this print and just give it some text to print it for you but in login you can just include the time time the time the logar has and logar has a lot of options for you to just output uh, it, an output to output any kind of text or any kind of uh, response to something, response to something, based on the function or the context you are using it for. So let's get back to our here. So just follow the. If we go back to the first module we have seen, uh, try to be, uh, understand the course through the ways that I did right now. Try to search it. Try to go to definition and understand each thing. If you knew every single thing in the way the the functions are written, try to search that. So, for example, here we can see this part. Add gather matrix. What does this mean? It is a decorator. What? So the first thing you have to do is what is what are decorators in Python? In Google, go to your Google search, or if you are using Chat GPT, just what does it mean decorator in Python? So let's just search it. What does decorators mean in Python? Yeah. A decorator is a design Python that allows users to add a new functionality to an exist without modifying its structure. So it looks like it's something that can make your uh, code more efficient, right? So uh, decorator is very useful to use in your Python code. It's an advanced, an advanced Python uh, technique. So go back to your code and see what this decorator is doing for them in their code. So you can see uh, first decorators can be a custom build or a built-in Python module where you install your Python. There are built-in uh, decorators that come with it and there are Custom, uh, custom decorator yeah, that you guys can create for your own project. So this gather matrix is a custom, a custom decorator. So to see what this gather matrix is doing, just check out which, where this gather matrix came from. You can see here it came from this file. It's, it's a function. You can see it in the description. It's a function. So you can call your functions as a decorator, which Again, like I told you, it makes your code more readable and efficient. So if you want to understand what this matrix uh, gather decorator is doing, go to the definition or yeah, let's go to the definition and see what the gather matrix is doing. Let me show you something here. It's found under the Showing me the pre uh, the preview of the gather matrix here. You can see this this uh, the gather matrix has its own decorator above it in the definition. If you see this overload de uh, decorator is a built-in. This one is a built-in uh, decorator of Python. It's built-in. Uh, it's not custom made. But this this one, the gather matrix, is a custom decorator that we are using in another module. In this execution control UI. So this over overload um, built-in uh, decorator of Python. If you don't want to search it, what is the overload built-in uh, decorator of Python do? The, the main purpose is, is to indicate there's an overload uh, function. It's, it gives you like a type to show you there's an overload function 
that will be happening below so this is a custom uh, ability so if you don't understand it just copy it and try to understand it by going to the python documentation or just simply search it here what is the overload before it means in python module Overloading the module of function methods function. No. Function, it gives you the definition of the overload uh, built in uh, decorator. So understand that and try to see how they use it in their stream code code. So the advantage. So this, the gather matrix, when we go back to the gather matrix, it, you can see it accepts. Two parameters, a name and a function. As a parameter, a function can be either can have a value or it can be none. So it's optional. So and like I told you before, when there's an arrow after a function is uh, described, it's indicating to is this part is in always indicating to show what type of output can we expect from this gather matrix. So we are expecting there will be a callback object, uh, which has a parameter f. So it can either return an F or uh, a call a call or an object uh, F or it can just returns an F itself. So this just gives you a hint what the what you expect from gather matrix function, what kind of output you can expect. So the gather matrix here will continue here. So here there's like I told you the function can be optional or it can have a value. So the here the new terms is union. Do you know what does it mean when you put it in your function? So if you don't know to search it again, what does a union, when I put my a union in my return type in my function, what it can do for you? So in this case, it's telling you the return time can be either a callable if with a parameter that has a, an object which accepts a parameter f. So the return can be an object f or the f itself it telling the union is showing you the return type for this gathering matrix can be one of them. So it can be uh, one of them. So this holds also here is showing it says optional. What does optional mean? When we put an optional in our parameter, what does it mean? When we put str in our function, what does it mean? It, this one indicating that the type of the name is string, and this one is telling you the function can be is optional the values can is optional either it has a type of f or it can either it's an f. so it's telling you it's optional the value the type of f is optional so like i mean like i told you before every function in their code base has a, a comment or a markdown here so with that it's just to give you an overview of what the function does so when we go back to the function uh, the logger function, if again, if you are confused what this do, just go to definition, definition, and we take you back to this logger.py, the one that we saw before. And what uh, the logger.warning, it will show you what it does in the logger, uh, in the logger.py. So it's showing, it's showing you if there's no name here on the gather to make this, if a name is not passed or if the name is empty. It will check it here. And if the name is not there, if it's not there, the logger function will throw a, a warning error saying as you may trace name is empty because empty or name is undefined. This is the logger, uh, the purpose of logger, just to throw or to put some kind of warning output in your logger file if you put it on a file or either it would display it on your uh, dashboard depending on how you set it up. So in if the function is none, which means the function in this one is the function parameter hasn't been passed, then here is none. If you don't pass it a, a function for as an as an as a parameter for the guard matrix uh, function, it will return this function. This defractor function will be displayed. So I, I think you understand what I'm, I'm trying to just try to see every new thing you haven't used it before. When you see it, try to click go to definition and see what it does 
And if the court here doesn't answer it, try searching it. If, there, if you are using ChatGPT, search there. And if the, the Python documentation, search it there. Our the documentation, you can also search there what is the purpose of this function or this Python code. Just try to find the way how they do it so you can use it on your uh, own application to make your application more uh, code efficient and to make their your code more standardized like them so they the, their project is done perfectly well so here this one what does it mean when we put arguments like this it has a meaning so search that when you put, uh, put like this and when you put your argument like this it has a meaning in python what does it mean so search that and find that find that out so I think you uh, guys find the purpose of what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So uh, there are a lot of the main things that I noticed from this documentation is the one thing is the logger. Understand how logger works in Python and how they use logger in their stream for code base and try to, under, to make sense of it to know how you can do it for your own personal use. And this decoration part, either you can find a custom decoration uh, like this, which means there's a function in Gazer. If it's a custom, probably there's a function with this name in, in somewhere in, your, in, in this uh, particular folder. So try to find that function and try to understand what it can do, what, uh, how decorators are, how you can use them in your project, what is their purpose. Like their, their main purpose is to just make your uh, application more code efficient. They will just action. So try to understand how you can use decorators. And they're like the, the one that I showed you, the app overloads that are built in uh, decorators that come with when you install your Python. They are built in uh, decorators that you can use in your application. So try to differentiate what is the difference between built in decorators and custom decorators. How can I use them? How, how this uh, decorators are, are, are being used in the streamlit code base and how I can use them in my own project. So I'll try, try, try to understand this, this point and try to conclude what you're, what you're finding is. Okay. So try to see almost all codes to see if there's anything uh, that you haven't used before that, or that you haven't seen before, if there's anything try to understand that what are these things again this is the python typing uh, what does it mean with the generic optional type bar so what what kind of hint can it give you uh, type of hint can you get from python so try to also go through everything uh, how they use classes in their stream code base how they uh, use function Rahmet, so let yeah. me just before i go like let me i mean i think that's probably you know people are not participating i don't know what that is there are no questions i assume it's just because it's the first day um but i expect more interactions uh, more questions otherwise it just becomes not useful in, in per se but also i think for some of you you might be wondering that this is too advanced there's nothing like that you just have to open a code look at it if you don't understand it now hope that you know it's for, for sure you will understand it next time or you know the next after so it's almost always a, it's just that just because you don't know it today shouldn't scare you and it's about the attitude and the habit to open any code see what it is if you don't understand it now fine you can ask it or you can learn from the discussions but ultimately it's remove your fear from like or just only using you know coding with only the knowledge that you have before or the common knowledge. I think you should use the every advantage that Python gives, whether it's built-in operators, your own operator, caching, logging, anything that Python offers, why not use it, right? So, but of course, today you might not use it. This week you might not use it because it's like you still have to understand it. That's okay. But it is the, the point is to really make sure that you are not scared about you know, some, por some form of Python programming. And you should be able to, uh, by the end of it, you should be able to really learn a much, you know, part of Python's advanced program. Okay, 
So I hope with that you you don't get scared just opening any code um, and learn from it. So I will have to go now, but I hope you will uh, ask more questions, Raymond. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, the other thing you will notice in the course is this kind of underscore. Underscore has a lot of meanings in Python, so try to understand. Sometimes underscore can be used to uh, indicate that variable is private or to give special meanings for some uh, functions. So, underscore has a lot of meanings in Python, so try to understand what does underscore mean in Python? Where can we be that we use it? And how does in this stream board this, this underscore has been used? For what purpose, for what context has been this uh, underscore used? Either you can see a double underscore like this one, or you can see a single underscore like this one. It has a meaning, so I try, try to understand what does it mean. So try to take a note. Uh, uh, since now, I think I mentioned four points, uh, four or three points. The first one is logging. What does it mean logging in Python and how it is structured in the stream with code base, the first thing. The second, we see decorators. We have seen two types of decorators, the custom decorators and the built-in Python decorators. How they are, what it, first try to understand their meaning in, in general in Python and try to see it in the stream code base how they are used, how they are used so you can see the structure, so you can have a hint how to use it. Uh, the other thing uh, I mentioned would be this underscore part. So till now we have, see, no, we have in the Python typing. What is the purpose of Python typing? It gives you a hint for variables, for many things, the type thing. So, Take, I, I will ask at the end of the tutorial. I have mentioned four key points. Okay, the typing, the logging, the underscore in Python, and decorators. Two types of custom decorators and built-in decorators. So in this code, you in this entire stream code bit, you will see this uh, functionalities of Python a lot. So and in different forms in different contexts. So try to. Uh, analyze everything so the other thing uh, we can see other than this part here is in the hello uh, when you install streamlit in your application the first thing you do uh, with streamlit when you run streamlit hello it will give you the streamlit their standardized uh, dashboard right so it, this is their code this is their code in their code base uh, this is the home this is the one that i added myself but this is their official homepage. homepage and these are the pages you can see them when you run stream hello you will see this uh, sidebar menus so in this sidebar menu is there anything that you don't know check it check it from starting from the import try to alter what is this have you used this module before try to use it or try to understand it what it can do for you and this part is the one that i want you to see this cache data the purpose of cache data in Streamlit, what, what it can do for you. So if you try to run this uh, uh, homepage of Streamlit without this uh, SAP cache, uh, the way it will load this data will be too slow. So when you use cache data, it will be more faster because uh, why? Before I answer you the question, why? Try to search it. So go to Streamlit dashboard and see what cache data means in Streamlit. This is a decorator in Streamlit, and which means there's no value of any kind of function, must be kept each color of cache data its own copy of the cache data. So, because of this reason, when you load the data using this cache data, when you put your cache data, when you have some uh, loading you have to do in your application, this cache data make it a lot faster compared to without using it. So why the difference? What does cache data mean? How the the behind work of cache data? So try to understand that one. So if I cache data. So if I just show you the difference between using cache data and not using cache data, 
you'll see the difference. This one here. Now let's just comment this and see what can, what what is the difference between using cash data and not using cash data. Demo right, or cash that is found. Better to frame demo right. So now see how it shows the data. Let's add another India. You see, it wait a little. Uh, give you a little loading for adding, uh, giving you the new loaded data. So now let's make the caching uncommon and see the difference. So we'll add it. Now let's add some Brazil France. You see? You can see the change in an instance without any loading. The difference between this uh, having the, the cache functionality and without having it. So try to run some of the code you are confused about and try to see the difference uh, they have, the, the difference they, they have on your code, their purpose. So this is one point I want you to see the cache data is very important, especially when you have a lot of loading in your application. So try to understand that part also. Uh, what else is there? Just go to every code you can see and try to see anything that you haven't used before or understand before. And when you don't see, uh, when you don't know how, uh, where it comes from, just click here and go to definition. It will show you the details. Search everything. What does this mean? Which means it give, the return could be anything, right? So try to just uh, see any uh, Python code uh, you, you don't know before it's not about only knowing the functionality of this python functionality it's just also about knowing uh what kind of uh, how how you can use them and the main purpose of you guys seeing this stream code is to see how you can use these functionalities in practice uh, how, because it's here everything is done well so it will give you some ideas how you can use it in your application uh, there are here are handlings also somewhere. Try to find out they they try to handle errors here like this one. So in Java, if you have experience in JavaScript, we use or not use we use try catch right to under handle our error. Uh, in Streamlit or in Python, we use uh, Streamlit. We use try exception. So if there is an error it will be captured in the exception part. So this is how they handle error, error handling. The way they write the error handling, you can find the error handling everywhere, especially where there is a functionality that you have to put in try catch or in try exception here. So try to see the error handling where there's an emojis uh, file. This is the emoji they put for their uh, code base. But the, the point is not about the emojis, it's the point about how they try uh, to structure the function to for their emojis. They give option, either it can be a random emojis or users to pick their emojis. So the point is not about the emojis, uh, rather than how they structure the code to uh, for their each module. Just try to see how they do things, how they uh, use the Python code or the Python functionality found in the document here, how they try to capture everything, the color. They have this different manipulation for coloring, styling in their code base. So try to see their uh, manipulations they made here, how they go about it, how they error handling everything. 
you can fire everything you're typing you have to understand typing there's a lot of typing especially the time you can find it everywhere in their code so i think i give you the whole idea how you should go about it so i'm going to stop sharing and start accepting your questions so anyone who understands what i'm trying to say first Try to volunteer or I'll ask myself if you have understand anything. Is there no questions? Is everything clear? So let me ask Lil Sadat Masfin, would you unmute your mic? Lil Sadat. Or you can write on the chat what did you understand from the tutorial session? Do you know how you can? Search the code base. Okay, Brahan, you can continue. The code base is big, but you just can uh, only check out the stream. The stream bit uh, folder under the new folder here. Let me show you again the on this GitHub. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry. Are you with me? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, I felt like I'm uh, unmute, so I'm gonna repeat myself. So okay. My, my question is under a week one challenge in the instruction section, um, it says our folder structure should uh, imitate uh, as, as much as possible the streamlit live structure, which is like, so my, my question here is like, uh, taking the code structure and the formatting, like, like the things that you said about the decreters or the things that, uh, let's say, the loggers they have used, should we imitate the, those those things or the whole thing, the structure of the whole thing? I haven't get to understand that point because yeah. like, there are there are multiple files in the folder, and then like, uh, should we should we imitate in what way or which things? It's not about it? okay. Thank you, Brian. It's not about the folder they have. The uh, folder has their specific use for their particular uh, simple uh, simple dashboard or code base. So just try to take from their code base. The, the major things like the logging is something that's important to have in your folder. Also, uh, the way they structure their pages, their modules, their structures, the way they classify their functions and classes, uh, the way they import their files. These major things that I tried to mention here, uh, the, the return times under your function, how they assign with the arrow part. So try to under take that part and structure the code through that way. Try to imitate that way, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so in that stream, uh, lead, uh, we have tried to understand this folder, this stream, this folder. This is the one that I was showing you right now, this one. And there's the leaf folder, there's another stream, this folder. So since you can, See everything if you want to, but uh, it is a lot. So just try to focus on this folder and try to see what you understand from this stream bit uh, code base. So. 
I think I answered uh, some of your questions, like Nathaniel in Abdul Hamid. Focus on the stream link folder and try to find questions there. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, female students. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can continue. No, oh, thank you. Uh, so when you create your dashboard, you import Streamlit, right? Uh, yeah. th that That's usually from uh, the installation. Uh, earlier, you comment and uncomment the ACT cache data and see the difference uh, when it loads the, the data, right? Yeah. And so to experiment those uh, things, do we need to clone and import that clone data in our application? No. How this code? Yeah. Okay, how you want to return the stream code base is your choice. If you are comfortable to see uh, you through your PS code editor, uh, for me, it was either like that because I can just simply say go to definition and see every change, right? If mm -hmm. you want to see from your GitHub, you have to just go through every folder because you have no option that the VS code editor can give you. This, um, if you saw me, uh, see me before, I clicked when every function I don't know happened, I right click and they click the go to definition option yeah, yeah yeah you have that option on your editor you cannot find it on your github so all oh, right i think it will be more efficient for all of you if you clone the data and go to the streamlit folder and just try to understand everything that is happening under the streamlit folder for uh, this session or for this week you don't right, have to thanks. see everything on the github yeah Thank you. Sorry, I, I thought I was unmute. Okay, I was asking Miron uh, to unmute your mic and tell me your understanding of the tutorial session. Okay, Miron, okay, you can continue, Miron. Okay, the purpose of double N single underscore in Python. I need some brief. So I want you to, to tell me if you understand how you can uh, go over this Streamlit code base based on what I said. If you understand how you have to find this key point in this stream code base and know how they are done. Do you understand that part of the tutorial session? Yes. So the first thing that you will do, just, just give me one thing that you understand from tutorial session. Uh, uh, I, I don't clone the code, and uh, I don't keep. <laughs> it's not mandatory to clone it, but to understand it more, I would recommend all of you to clone it. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Abdul Hamid, if you are still raising your hand, you can continue. Okay, so. Uh, my question is in regards to how big is the repository with um, the size, like yeah, in megabytes? The size is really big, but it, it can be cloned. Uh, if the cloning is there, especially, uh, it might take a lot of your internet connection. So simply just can download the zip file. That's more easier. Oh. 
Okay, okay. It's and one additional, yeah. okay, one additional question I have is, what is the uh, uh, starting files that we will need to run uh, once we clone the uh, repo? Is it me? Yeah. And, and this one is for me? Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? The, the starting uh, file. Uh, is it underscore underscore main dot py? To run the repo? Lib. The first folder is lib. After yeah. you. Then stream lib. After lib, it will be stream lib. There's a folder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the then that okay. folder, the stream lib folder, just try to see everything. Okay, I, 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 I thought I saw you running the repo, so I was wondering which file you run, you're run. Uh, you running. Yeah, um, I, I am under the lib, then the stream bit folder. Uh, yes, but what, which file exactly did you run? Let me just show you my You can see the GitHub, right? After I clone it, I go to this folder and then this folder, the stream lead folder. This is Zen. the whole code. Yeah, there's no there. This is the whole code that we are seeing in my list code. Oh, I, I thought the code was running. Was it not? Okay. Yeah, when you run this stream bit folder and then run stream bit hello, it can run uh, the hello dashboard. Which file did you run? Hello? Right. Stream bit folder. Yes. Be on the stream bit folder here. Okay. Or let me show you the code here. You can see it. I am under the stream bit folder. Okay. To run stream bit hello, you don't have to be in the hello folder. Here, uh, this thing does work. You can write this stream bit hello folder under this stream bit folder. It's okay. here, build team dashboard. So, but I have made some changes here by creating a new uh, under this hello folder. When you make changes in this hello, they, this is their built in uh, module. So, when you make changes here, you cannot, you cannot change anything here. Even if you change okay. here, you cannot see the change on the uh, display on the local host that is run under this command. So just create this, uh, some other uh, function, like I, I create this one and copy paste the hello page here. And every make it a change you make here, you can see. So to run this home, you have to be on under the hello folder and then run, run on the P1. Any change you make under the hello module, uh, you cannot see the change. This is a built in dashboard that you cannot change anything there and see the uh, output. Okay, so just create any folder and copy paste the hello uh, code to your new module. All right, thank you. Sorry, Abdul Hamid, uh, is it clear? Yes, yes, thank you. Iman, you can continue. Iman, can you hear me? Okay, Brooke, you can. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question that uh, uh, on a streamlet uh, method or uh, repository, what the use of the, the use of typing? Can you explain that? The use of typing it has a lot of use, but uh, it has a lot of use. But the main use that I have I have tried to show you in this presentation is it can show you the type of uh, variable. For example, if you see the code I showed you before, uh, the I think what was it? The debug logging message. After that, there is a typing thing named fi final. So in, 
in typing the word final indicates that the variable is a constant variable which means that variable cannot be changed. So if, for example, I give you an example, the variable name, let's say it is a value, and you put a final under that value name, and you put uh, is equal to something or something, uh, it will throw an error, because you're indicating first the value is a final, which means the value cannot be changed. So you cannot assign another value to the value variable, because you already give a type of thing saying the value variable is final, which means it's constant, it cannot be changed. So assignation will now work when you have a typing hint like final after a variable. Is that clear, Brooke? Yes, yeah, yeah thank you. Iman, if you are there, you can continue with your question. Okay, finally, you can go ahead. Okay, hello everyone, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So when we write the report on the Streamlit project, and how they write the code and stuff, uh, do we like, our, for example, like when we use the final uh, identifier and stuff, like are we supposed to explain that, what that means, or how they used it, or what was the purpose, like literally anything else, but why they chose that thing over other things? Are we supposed to write like that, or are we just supposed to, you know, write about our findings and how they used it? Yeah, just try to write your findings first of all. There would be some key points you want to discover by going through their code. So try to first uh, explain your findings and how you find how they use their findings. For example, if you see the underscore, the underscore, like I told you before, it can be used for different purposes in different contexts. So maybe you have noticed how they use their underscore in their code base in different ways. So mention that, how they use it, their specified widget. If you have, if you must share a code from their code, try to uh, share also your code in your documentation to see your findings, how different it is with or without using it. Just follow the European. Yeah. Okay, so like we write explanations based on yes. the code they provide, like we use a part of difference, right? Yeah, your exp the explanation would be your understanding. It can be your okay. and everything. So explanation should be included. Uh, try to share also some codes just to give us some idea of what you are saying. Okay, like sharing the bar chart and stuff like just for yeah. the time. No, it it should be just simple uh, course not to make your documentation way too large because their code is a lot so just to see some functionalities right like the maybe it could be the return type or to show the underscoring just pick one uh, function from their code and just give us a line by line through uh, understanding of their the code and the function of python that they used okay. Iman, uh, yes, the main things, uh, try to, uh, if you can answer the task on the documentation, it means you have done the job of understanding the streaming folder, but you, you shouldn't be limited to only the things that are mentioned on the task. If you discover something uh, different uh, regarding the Python functionality in their code base, mention of uh, include that also on your report. Cover all that has the uh, question asked on the task, but if there are additional things, yeah, make sure you add it. Anyone? Okay, so let yeah, the people told you it can be overwhelming, so try to do your best. Uh, use every research method from YouTube, Google, Chat, GPT to understand uh, most of the things. Uh, so just do your best. Don't uh, be uh, overwhelmed with it. 
this just this field is just for you to understand how you understand a, a code base or a source code. So I think there's no submission today, right? I don't think there's submission today. Yeah, Wednesday. Okay, thank you guys. So any question, share it on the Slack. I'll try to answer it. So thank you for being here. So if, uh, we can stop the recording now. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice night. Abdullahi, if you're there, you can...